Yesterday, I got the opportunity to go to Disneyland's California Adventure. It was a little bit weird because of the time right now. Everything is limited there. They're set to 25% capacity, so there are no lines and no crowds. Almost everything was just kind of a walk-on experience. And really, I wanted to see what that was going to be like because I don't expect it to stay like that for long. And I don't expect this to happen again. I think this is kind of maybe a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity where it's going to be extremely empty and I could go check things out. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about today. Disneyland has a lot of cool, awesome tech and a lot of cool stuff going on there. But I was kind of reminded while I was there of all of the game development-y type stuff that happens in theme parks and outside of just actual video games. I was thinking about some of the interactive rides as well, things like the Toy Story Mania where you go around and you pull these little things and shoot at interactive stuff. It's basically a video game in the theme park. Or the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run Ride, where one person controls the pitch and the other person kind of steers you side to side. And then the people in the back, I don't remember what they do. They get to push buttons that maybe control something that's going on in the interactive simulation. Now, I don't know what they use to build any of those specific ones, but there have been plenty that I've come across inside of different theme parks and museums, like I said, that were using actual Unity projects. I could tell they were Unity projects. I'd recognize them. Sometimes I'd even see them not launched or playing a little splash screen when they started up right when they opened up. So it's very interesting to me to see this kind of stuff and see some of these external applications that aren't just game development, but are still fun and in the entertainment industry. So when I got home, I actually started doing a little bit of searching to see what other types of talks were out there, or what people were saying about this, and if there was any information. I actually came across a really interesting talk from uh, Unite 2020 that I missed. It was one of the remote ones that they did. And it was about uh, this tool called World Builder, which apparently allows you to build out theme park related rides. And it's something that they built in Unity. That wasn't really a Unity related talk or a game dev related talk, but it was pretty interesting because it was just covering one of the millions of different types of things. I, I don't know about millions. One of the many different types of things that you could build with Unity that's not really a game, but is still extremely valuable and extremely useful and really takes advantage of all of those game dev skills. Now, before we go any further, I wanna recommend that you just scroll down a little bit into the description and click on his video. It only has, what, 2,000 views right now. I think it deserves a whole lot more. And go click on the like button as well, or at least add this to your queue and then watch it later. While you're at it there, don't forget to hit my uh, like button and subscribe. And feel free to check out the course bundle that I've got going on right now in the description as well. If you go watch his talk and go take a look at what they've actually built there or just any interactive experience at a theme park, maybe just go to a park or go to a museum. If there's not a theme park around you, there are definitely museums almost everywhere. And museums tend to have a lot of these. Go look at some of the interactive displays and go see how they actually work and how they interact. And if you've done much game development or you've thought about it, or maybe you just played around in Unity a little bit, with UIs and clickable things and draggable stuff, you'll pretty quickly recognize and start to see how these things are built. A lot of the time, they're not even built in-house, especially with these smaller places. I mean, Disney probably has you know many different corporate arms that are building different applications and games and all kinds of stuff. They may contract stuff out too, I don't know, but the smaller places definitely do. They definitely hire out small companies or contractors, independent contractors, or even open up bids to like take in contracts to build out some interactive display for their museum. For instance, one of my past students and really close friends built out quite a few different little mini kids games to teach about things like recycling and environmental protection. And they were built in Unity, put together relatively quickly, and they'd get the job done. They work and they make it so that you know kids can learn stuff and they have these cool displays. You got to remember, too, that when you're putting these things together, like you're writing this application or maybe you're working on this team, writing this interactive application, it's just a small part of the entire thing. So it makes your small part, well, when the whole thing comes together, it makes your small part seem really, really cool. And it's the same with like any of the little displays or other things that you might see at some place like Disneyland, even things like uh, little blinking eyes in the wall. They're neat, kind of cool, but you see them in the context of a whole giant undersea environment and stuff, and suddenly it makes sense and it's cool. Or a little screen that's interactive where you can just tap on things. Might not be super exciting normally, but if there's a whole bunch of stuff around the kid that's you know kind of teaching them and leaning in and explaining 
what it is that they're tapping and tying it all together. It makes the experience a lot cooler and better too. And I don't know why I kind of went off on that tangent, but I thought it was kind of important to note, I guess, just because a lot of the time when you build these things, you're building stuff that doesn't always seem that exciting. And like the code itself seems really boring. And the, the application might seem sometimes boring. Not always. Sometimes they're really exciting, great projects. I'm sure like working on Smuggler's Run must have been a freaking blast. But you know, building out like some little recycling game may not be as exciting. But when you see it in the full environment and you see the whole thing come together, it'll really, gonna, I think, change your mind and open your eyes to like the cool kind of stuff that you can build relatively easily outside of games. But it's not just small scale things either. There are a lot of big companies doing really big things with interactive displays that use Unity, things like Lollapalooza, or even the NFL and a bunch of different professional sports. In fact, the friend of mine who built that Lollapalooza display, they also built one that they used for the Super Bowl and used for a bunch of other professional sporting events. So it's not just game development that you can do with your game development skills. There's all kinds of different industry related stuff, a lot of visual things, pretty much anything where people need interactive visual displays. Just remember that Unity or some other visual game engine can work there and can pretty much get the job done and might be what they're using already. In fact, it probably is. So I wasn't sure how I wanted to end this video and wrap it up and get it up to eight minutes so that YouTube would actually care about it and give you something useful. But then I thought, why not talk a little bit about how to get these jobs? I'm not going to talk specifically about how to get hired for them because I think that finding people that are hiring these jobs is going to be about the same as finding people that are hiring game dev jobs. You're just going to be looking for things that are maybe a little bit different. The keywords might not be exactly the same. They're not going to say game. They might say interactive display. So you might want to search for things like interactive display or 3D display or even 2D cartoon display or cartoon interactive. Definitely the word interactive tends to be really popular though something to search for, I guess, if you're going to actually look for a job. The other thing I want to talk about, though, is getting actual contracts for this stuff, because a lot of the time what happens for these positions is that small contractors go out and they bid on them. So the positions will be put up or the projects will be put up for proposal. They'll make it kind of a public open thing that you if you know about and you know where to look, you can find it and you can start looking at the requirements and then put together a proposal submit it and get your bid in there and then they pick the bid that they like the best and how they pick the bid i have no idea i think it varies dramatically depending on the organization but i know quite a few people who've done this in the past who started off with little to no experience not really sure even how they were going to finish and build the project they would get the contract they would figure it out they would grind through it maybe not make very much money the first time but Sometimes they would do great. And then they'd start to build up. They'd get better and better at it and start to take more and more of these contracts and start to make it into something profitable where they were doing it kind of as a full-time job on their own and even hiring out subcontractors. And it's definitely something you can do without, I think, a whole lot of experience or capital. You really just have to have a lot of energy and tenacity to go look at all of these different organizations, find out where they post their proposals or where they post their openings for proposals and then start writing up proposals for them. I would probably look around in your local area first because it'd be a lot easier if you're familiar with the place and you know about the place and then maybe expand out from there. But if you happen to have any thoughts on this or just advice for people that are interested in doing this kind of stuff or just you know some cool displays that you've seen that you want to share that I could take a look at because I was doing a lot of searching trying to find stuff please just drop them in a comment below, um, you know, let everybody know, you know what the cool thing is or you know, how you think they could go find some positions doing this kind of stuff or find some of these contracts. Or you know, if you don't want them taking the contract, say, hey, go away, they're terrible. Don't, don't do these, they're, they're the worst idea or something. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope this was somewhat useful and helpful. It was definitely interesting and fun for me. All right, bye.